Brother Zev is with us out of Israel. Zev, are you there? Yes, Shalom, uh, Carl. Thank you for having me, and blessings from Israel. Ah, blessings to you, and Shalom to you. And yes, I know it's uh, getting very close to midnight, if it's not midnight already there. Let me tell my audience who you are. Most of my audience knows, but we pick up new people all the time. Zev Parat is born and raised in Israel. He was born into a rabbinic family, if you will. His dad was a rabbi, and uh, his grand both of his granddads were rabbis, and uh, his great-grandfathers were rabbis, and raised in Israel, raised, I think, in B'nai Barak. And uh, he, anyway, he was studying to be a rabbi, so many, many years ago, but uh, but but came to saving faith in Jesus Christ. He now is a born-again believer in Jesus, Yeshua, as Messiah, and uh, has spent many, many years now through MessiahofIsraelMinistries.org, MessiahofIsraelMinistries.org. You can go to my website, carlgallops.com. At the bottom of the page there, you'll see a big banner and link to his ministry. And uh, he and, and, and he reaches Orthodox Jews for Christ in, in Israel and uh, all over that part of the world. He's been in several other countries, and, and, and of course, he'll witness to anybody, Jew or Gentile, but his heart is for the Jews who need to know Jesus Christ. In the meantime, uh, he's been using the material that I wrote on The Rabbi That Found Messiah, the story of Yitzhak Kaduri, and the movie, the documentary movie that was made about that book, and just God's story after God's story after God's story. Amazing, miraculous things happening through all of that. You and I have kind of coined it the Kaduri revival, Zeb. We know it's from the Holy Spirit, but I mean, it's because of what the note that Kaduri left and the open doors that that gives you. It's amazing. Amazing, isn't it, Zeph? Absolutely amazing. It's a really, uh, the God story, the Yeshua story. Then, yeah, you're right. It's the Jesus revival. It's the Kaduri revival. And as the Bible says in Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. But we got to get the Jewish people to read the written Word of God, to hear the gospel in order for the Holy Spirit to operate. And the book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, is doing just that. Amazing things are happening in Israel. And uh, every week, every month, more and more salvations, more people coming to faith, more people opening up and wanting to hear the gospel. It's just absolutely amazing. Uh, yeah. Just today, we were on outreach in uh, in Sevilla, in Tiberias, the Sea of Galilee, and we were uh, with a group of believers witnessing to people. And suddenly, an Orthodox man approached us, and he says, "Look, don't speak to these people. These people are missionaries. Are trying to take you away from being Jews. They're dangerous." And the people, and we're talking about people that are non-believers, turned to the Orthodox man and said, this is exactly what they said, this is not missionary work. He's speaking to us about Rabbi Kaduri, and we want to hear about it. <laughs> this Orthodox man turned red, and he just left. I've never seen anything like it in my life. I've got one thing to say. That's Romans eight thirty one. If God is for us, who can be against us? That's right. That's right, Zev. That's an amazing story. And I was going to ask you, and you've already kind of delved into it. I was going to ask you. So, how do you use? Uh, and I and I. <laughs> I don't want this to be an advertisement for the book I wrote, but I mean, that's what you're using. But how do you use that to get people to the gospel? Because the the book I wrote doesn't save anybody. The movie that was made doesn't save anybody. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. But to get to an Orthodox Jewish heart, that's a difficult thing to do. Because if you just go to the streets and say, I want to talk to you about Jesus, they're going to turn and walk away. So how do you use that Kaduri story to open that door? And how do you move from there into the gospel? How do you do that? Oh, that's, a, that's a very good question, Carl. You know, a few years ago, before we had this evangelistic tool, we were preaching the gospel, and we saw many, many salvations, glory to Yeshua, and many healings. But the process was much more difficult to reach the Jewish people because we had to go through, we had to go through rabbinic interpretations and show them that, you know, Ecclesiastics says that you know not to listen to the interpretation of man, but only the word of God. And it was a much more difficult process. Sometimes they had to go back to the rabbi. Sometimes they came back to us. Sometimes they didn't. But now. Now they say, we got to go see what the rabbis say. And we say, well, that's a very good idea. Let's see what the rabbis say. We pull out the book, the rabbi who found Messiah. The minute they look at the picture, the minute they see the picture of Rabbi Yitzhak Aduri, their face just glows, and they just want to, they want to know what's in the book. And before you know it, they see the notes, they get, they're, they're excited about it, and before they know it, they're in the gospel, and then the Holy Spirit starts to work on them. Right. So it's a powerful evangelistic tool. And uh, it just, it just, uh, there's no explanation for it except for it's a, 
It's God's master plan. That's what I got to say. Yeah, that's that's a that's a that's a good way to say it, Zev. And for our listeners that might not know what you and I are talking about about the Kaduri note, Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, when he died, he was 108 years old. Uh, the most venerated rabbi in modern Israel's history died in 2006. But before he did, he told his followers that he was leaving a note with the name of the real Messiah in it, and to be opened and to be posted on his website. And sure enough, after he died, uh, shortly thereafter, the note was opened. It was finally decrypted. He had written it in Hebrew and in a little cryptic format, but when it was decrypted, it was discovered that the name he left, naming as the real Messiah, was Yeshua, which is the Hebrew word for another way, Yeshua, or as we would say it in English, Jesus. So he declared that the name of the real Messiah uh, that was soon to come to Israel, to the world, his name is Jesus. Now, when that happened, when they decrypted the note, uh, his 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 uh, ministry team immediately removed it from the website, uh, tr uh, destroyed the note, uh, began d uh, saying that something was wrong, something was fishy, uh, began to uh, dis try to discredit the note. But in the meantime, some major media in Israel had already taken photocopies of it, pictured it, uh, posted it, made stories. In the meantime, I wrote the book, the documentary movie was made, and now Zef Perat has all of that at his fingertips to show the Orthodox Jews what their most famous rabbi said that's kind of he was kind of like the billy graham of the jews wasn't he zev absolutely and you know it's, the amazing thing is it's not just uh to the orthodox jews uh because even secular jews uh in israel they know who rabbi kaduri is and you know they may not want to be religious they may not follow all the rabbinic laws when, when it comes to basic things in the culture they'll always say we need to see what the rabbis say and they know that they, you know, they've been taught that if they read the Tanakh, the, the Old Testament, the Bible, they have to read it through the eyes of the rabbi. So this book is just opening their eyes. And I can just tell you that uh, we were in Ashdod a, a, a month or a month and a half ago. I believe we spoke about this too as well. And we were handing out the book. And we don't, we don't just hand out the book to anybody because if we would just start handing out the books in the street, we'd need containers and containers of books. Now, we want to be, you know, we want to use the Lord's money in, uh, in, in a correct way. So we're handing it out to people that want the book or handing it out to people that the Holy Spirit directs us to hand it out. And we were handing out in Asdod, and before you knew it, about 10 or 20 people asked for the book, and we ran out. We didn't have the book, and we had to make appointments to meet him again. Wow. So this Kaduri revival is over Israel. Yeah, that uh, that is exciting, Zev. That is so exciting. Listen, we're going to take a break in about a minute from now, Zev. But before we do, why don't you tell folks about your uh, website, about your Facebook page, uh, how to reach you, how to contact you, how to follow up and, and look at the work that you do. You also send out a newsletter that goes all over the world to many thousands and thousands of people. Tell them how they can sign up for that. Just tell them all of that. MessiahOfIsraelMinistries.org. Uh, there's a place over there to sign up to get our email updates. There's also a place to sign up to get uh, your prayer requests. We go to Jerusalem. We pray every five or ten days for all the prayer requests at the Wailing Wall and at the Mount of Olives. So please send in your prayer requests and your, your questions as well in the contact form. We also have a Facebook page. You can also Google the Messiah of Israel Ministries, and you'll find us real easy. Yeah, and and let me say to my listeners, uh, Zev is for real. His ministry is for real. He's been doing this for many, many years. Uh, he, he doesn't come on the show. He never asks for money uh, or, or support, but you can support him, and, and that's how he does his ministry. Uh, so you go to his sites, and you'll see the donate button if you want to give. And you don't have to, but if you want to, you can push the donate button and support his ministry. But when you see what he's doing, and look at, I mean, he's got video evidence. He's got picture evidence. He's got journalistic evidence. He writes articles all the time with pictures of, of these people coming to Christ and videos. You can watch these people coming to Christ and, and, and praying, receiving. Receiving Christ to save you, getting baptized in the in the Mediterranean Sea. I mean, it's 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 quite amazing. So if you want to support what God is doing in these prophetic times in which we're living, uh, right in Israel, uh, th through a man in a ministry that's been doing it for years, and I mean he's doing it. Uh, go to his stuff, Messiah of Israel Ministries org. If you're riding down the road listening to this uh, show, you might be saying, "I'll never remember that." Just go to carlgallops.com, click on the banner 
at the very bottom of my page, carlgallops.com or www.ppsimmons.com. We were talking about this, about uh, Jews, Orthodox Jews particularly, uh, even secular Jews coming to Christ uh, in Israel. And you and I both believe that that's rather prophetic. It's kind of last days biblical stuff. And you know, and, and I'm really bad, and, and a lot of Western Christians are really bad about talk uh, when we say, you, you know, well, that Jew was converted or, or that Jewish person, you know, we're converting that Jewish person. And I understand what that word means. But really, it's better to say that the the Jewish person, when they're when they're putting their faith in Yeshua as Messiah and Christ and Lord, they're being completed rather than converted, because the the gospel comes first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. And I mean, the gospel came through uh, Israel, came through the Jewish people. When God put on human flesh, He put on Jewish flesh and took the gospel to the Jews first. So for a Jew to come to Christ is nothing more than a completion of the cycle, right? Absolutely, and you're right. It does say to the Jew first, but it doesn't say to the Jew better, and we need to keep that in mind. That's right. And uh, regarding, you know, conversions, I mean, there's nothing wrong with using the word conversion, but, you know, if, if we look at Romans 11.23, it says that the Jewish people are grafted back in. So actually, they're going back to their roots. Once a Jew, you're born a Jew, you'll die a Jew. So when you become a New Covenant believer in Yeshua HaMashiach, you become a completed Jew. That's right. And the reason we don't use uh, the word conversion is because it's, it's a stumbling block when we preach the gospel to the Jewish people yes. because their first reaction is, oh, he wants to take me out of you know being a Jew. He wants to move me to the other side. And that's not true. We just want them to be grafted back in, Romans eleven twenty three and be completed Jews in Yeshua That's right. HaMashiach. That's right. And and it's my understanding, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of the Jews in Israel and in, in the Middle East, when they think of Christianity, they think of Orthodox. They think of Roman Catholicism or Greek Orthodox or something like that. And and of course, some of that, I mean, you know, they've they've suffered at the hands of, for, for example, the Roman Catholic Church during the Spanish Inquisitions and the Crusades, etc. So when you talk about converting them to Christianity, I mean, that's anathema to them. So we don't want to talk about, we're not not trying to make Western Christians out of them. We want them to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and and to be completed as a Jew, right? Absolutely, absolutely. And what you just touched about the you know the Catholic Church and all those pagan uh, pagan teachings that came in, um, they're they're big stumbling blocks when we preach the gospel. Because I myself, when when someone was preaching to me many many years ago, I always thought about candles and and you know and incense and 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 idol worship, and that's what I thought people are trying to move me into. And it's very important when we reach Jewish people anywhere in the world, not just in Israel, but we make it very clear. You're a Jew, you'll stay a Jew, but a real Jew believes in Yeshua HaMashiach, a completed Jew. Right. If we take that stand and explain it to them like that, that's when we have an opportunity to use the book, The Rabbi Who Found Messiah, to bring into the Word of God, and into salvation through the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah, and, and and that's so important, and it's important for them to understand, and for Christians in America to understand. Look, the New Testament is a Jewish book. All of the authors were Jewish, and and, and, and they were written primarily to the Jews first. I mean, there were some Gentiles in the early church, but not until Paul started his missionary journey several decades later and, and wrote some of those letters. But like when he writes to the Romans, for example, in Rome, he writes to the church in Rome. You'd think, oh, that'd be a bunch of Romans. Well, <laughs> the first eight chapters, he says, I'm talking to you Jews. I'm talking to you Jews. And then in chapter 11, he starts saying, now I'm talking to you Gentiles. So there were Jews and Gentiles uh, in that early church, but, but primarily it was, it was given to the Jews first. And, and when Jewish people find that out, sometimes they're, they're surprised. They don't know that. Absolutely, absolutely. But you know what? Uh, we are in the end times right now. The veil is being lifted, Second Corinthians uh, 3.16. And, and we're seeing this. We're seeing this all happen right now. And uh, that's why we call it a Kaduri revival, because it's a God revival, yes. But uh, I believe the timing of this book that was published, the timing that you wrote the book, the timing that it hit the streets of Israel, is all end time stuff. Man, I appreciate it. I appreciate it, Zev, and I praise God, uh, glory for anything good coming out of it, and praise God that He's connected uh, you and me. I mean, so so through 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 me, you have a direct connection to the United States and 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 media over here, and then through you, uh, I have a direct connection to Israel and uh, and to the ministry there. So it's an amazing way that the Lord's brought us together. Uh, a Gentile Baptist preacher that loves the Jewish people in America, and a Jewish uh, completed Jew. Uh, who loves the Jews and the Gentiles uh, from
from Israel and connecting us together. That's an amazing thing. See, only God could do that, Zeph. Amen, amen. We give him all the glory. But, you know, it's not just to the Jews. It's also to the, to our, you know, to the Arabs. And uh, uh, we're preaching the gospel here to the Arabs, to the Muslims. We have many, many uh, stories of going into mosques and meeting, uh, meeting imams and meeting uh, other, uh, other Arabs. Just this week, uh, I was uh, driving down the Haifa for outreach over there, and uh, the news was playing uh, the, the situation in, uh, uh, in the north with the, uh, with the fighting with the, uh, in the border with the IDF soldiers. And God told me, I want you to turn the car and I want you to drive to Akko. Akko is a city north of Israel. Yes, I've been there. And when I drove there, he said, I want you to go into, uh, to speak to the Muslims in a mosque. So I walked right into the, to the mosque, and the Muslims, they turned to me, and they, you know, they thought there was, a, you know, there's fighting going on right now in the north, and this Israeli guy is walking in our mosque. He's here to cause trouble. So they kind of, you know, they kind of got, got scared. You know, a mosque is a very dangerous place to go oh, yeah. and share Yeshua. But because of the situation of that day, it was the other way around. It was like they were scared of me. <laughs> and uh, I said, no, I'm here. I love you guys, and, uh, you know, I'm a believer in, in Yeshua, and I know the promises of Ishmael and the promises of Abraham. And I'm here to, to say, yes, there's fighting right now going on in the north. But if we want peace, it's going to be through Yeshua, the Messiah. And, of course, they opened uh, the Quran, and then they started to ask me questions. And, and they wanted to know, you know, you're an Israeli guy. Why would you come over here and, and even talk to us? And, I, and your own people don't believe in Yeshua, al Messiah. And, of course, as usual, uh, the Rabbi Yitzhak Aduri, uh story came up. And before you knew it, Muslims were looking at the rabbi who found Messiah and getting the full gospel. We've got some pictures of this, uh, amazing pictures, and well, hopefully next week we'll send out a report about it. So I encourage the listeners to sign up to get newsletters on our on MessiahofIsraelMinistries.org, and they'll get that report as well. Okay, but that that is exciting. Yeah, because they'll ask you, why are you, a Jew, telling us about Jesus when your own people don't even believe in Jesus as the Messiah, and then you're able to say, well, actually, the greatest rabbi who ever lived in modern Israel's history believed Jesus was Messiah, and here's the evidence of it, and then that opens up the gospel to the Muslims. Absolutely, and then, and then I explained to them, look, because the Jewish people are not coming into faith in Yeshua, and because the Arabs are not coming into faith in Yeshua, that's why there's war, that's why there's, there, there, there's a mess in the Middle East and in the world, so... The Jews come into faith in Yeshua, the Arabs come into faith in Yeshua, and we become one new man. Yeah. And you know what? And, and you got to understand, I'm saying this in a mosque to people who are worshiping Muhammad and Allah, and they're listening to this, and they're not touching me because God is protecting me in this situation. Yeah. We give yeah. them all the glory. Yeah. And that's, we thank believers like you around the world who are praying for us. That's, a, that's amazing, Zeph.